Welcome to All Write in Sin City, a podcast about writers and writing in the Windsor, Detroit region. Your podcasters today are Irene Moore Davis, author, educator, and local historian, Sarah Jarvis, former bookseller, publishing rep, and literary festival chair, and me, Kim Conklin, Windsor based writer and filmmaker. This episode of All Right in Sin City, we are pleased to feature Kevin Spence, who has visited Windsor, Detroit recently as part of his Chuffed About Chat Books tour, a 50 venue poetry tour from April to July 2023, focused on his recent chat books. Vancouver based poet Kevin Spence, a pushcart poetry nominee, is the author of Ignite, Jabbering with Bing Bong, and Hearts Amok, a memoir in verse, all with Anvil Press, as well as over a dozen dozen chat books. His work has won the Lush Triumphant Award for Poetry, has been nominated for both the Alfred G. Bailey Prize and the Robert Croach Award for Innovative Poetry, and has appeared in dozens of publications, including Event, The Malahat Review, Prairie Fire, CV2, The Rusty Took, Lemon Hound, Poetry is Dead, and the anthologies Best Canadian Poetry 2019, Best Canadian Poetry 2020, and Sweetwater Poems for the Watersheds. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Irene. So you have been going across the country, engaged in this Chuffed About Chat Books tour. How did the idea for that tour come about? Well, I've been doing these uh, marathon readings um, for a while. This was 2007 when I um, chose some of my, some of my favorite microfictions and self-published a little collection. And I thought, well, they're microfictions, so why not do a whole bunch of readings um, around town? So I organized 50 venues in one day by bicycle. Wow. And what kind of shape were you in after that? um pretty good shape and then balance I had very good balancing abilities because one of the venues was going down Quebec Street and there were about five other cyclists and I read the story um for that quote-unquote venue out loud with these uh, other cyclists around me so it was it was a fun kind of it was a fun little adventure and then I've kind of just been doing this again and again I, actually some years later I did a hundred readings in one day with Ray Sue, Kim Fu, and Andrea Bennett. When you're talking about a hundred readings in one day, what time do you start and what time do you stop? We met for breakfast at a little pub in East Vancouver. And then we worked from about like 10 in the morning until seven, maybe seven. And it was just very short, you know, very short little readings at all of our favorite coffee shops. Um, each reading was maybe three minutes or four minutes. And then it was just the momentum of having a lot of people kind of follow us for various stretches over the course of the day. So your current tour this spring and summer has been focused on uh, hitting a bunch of cities across Canada. How did you select the places that you were going to read? I wanted this to be an adventure of kind of making connections with the poets that I know, the, the bookstores that I've heard of, and also the, the small chapbook publishers. So I began in Edmonton, where I'd never read or, or even been as an adult. And um, Catherine Owen who also has a practice of marathon reading. And she has a salon in her backyard. Um, and there's also this new bookstore in Edmonton called Paper Birch Books. And I was really excited to make a connection with that bookstore, to connect with uh, Catherine and her reading series. And it, was, it made for a, a fantastic start. And you've been to Winnipeg, you're you're now in Windsor. I know you're headed to London and other parts of Ontario from Windsor. What have you got going on in Windsor while you're here? Well, today was amazing. I had the biggest audience ever for the 131st birthday of Windsor as part of the Mayor's Walk. I read one poem from a videotape swaddled in purple wool, which is out from uh, 845 Press. I read the one poem once and then performed it a second time. I sang it the second time. 
It will rain like rods on the hillside in Sweden. It will rain married men in Spain and intermittent toads beards Saturday morning in Portugal. An intense Pacific frontal system of bamboo, grass, and sand will fall over Tokyo. There's a chance of young cobblers developing over Berlin and running right across the country all the way to Athens where they will fall Sunday afternoon alongside chair legs. In Nantes, it's currently raining nails in Grenoble. No bullets, granoi, ropes in, rains and yacht is getting nailed. Cows are peeing lightly over Paris. In the north of Taipei, plums will plummet Monday morning. There's a strong chance of fire and sulfur, oracuvic, which will reek of burnt umbrellas for weeks. In Bangkok, it will rain children's eyes and ears shut for a month, and then they will open and be quizzed like little winds on all the directions. I wanted to project and really get, you know, get it out to those people. And there was a good turnout. I'd say there were at least 100 people out there today. It was, it was a fun afternoon. And then we went to um, the art gallery next door and I wrote some poems in response to various works of art and then uh, transferred those first drafts onto little, very tiny chapbooks that I made on the spot. And then I read them to people in the gallery. Would you like to read it? I just like, or I'll read it. I'll read it to you. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> it's um, called Growing Out of the Canvas. Roots, like gold bracelets, peek out from the Earth's wealth. A resplendence of colors above charm a forestscape. Paint blotches on the edge of the canvas, like Morse code for the eyes, cones and rods that understand value in its smallest, unframed spectacle. Yeah. That is really cool, isn't it? Yes. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. <laughs> and everybody was so interested in this. I read to this family, and then their daughter uh, appeared, and I read it again to her, and she was so delighted to get this little book. And then she put it in her purse, kind of like a, a little coin in a piggy bank. It was really sweet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you have a reading scheduled at Biblio Oasis while you're in Windsor. I do. I'm very excited to be reading Monday night at Biblio Oasis with Maid, which is um, uh, Mark Le Liberté and Jade Wallace, and um, another poet. Rawan Mustafa. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm unfamiliar with her work, but I'm very excited to be reading with her too. Oh, she's, you know what? She is a great poet from our city, from our community, and also just a great performer of poetry. So you will love hearing her voice. I love hearing her read poetry whenever I have an opportunity to do so. I mean, you've been doing sort of readings in traditional spaces, like uh, bookstores and libraries and I mean you mentioned a backyard salon things like that what is the strangest place that you have read so far on this tour the last flight um Winnipeg to Toronto I sat next to this fellow who was very big his forearm was on the headrest in front of him his um, forearm looked like a, a deflated football he was six foot something and I asked him what um, if he was coming or going. He said he was going. He was leaving Winnipeg. He'd, he'd seen a football game. I asked him if that was his background. And he said he played for the CFL for 10 years. Oh. And so I wrote a little football poem for him. <laughs> Put it on the, the airplane sickness bag, which I folded into a chapbook and then gave it to him. He was a good sport. Yeah, I took a picture of him with his giant hand and making the little chat book even smaller. And uh, and then one of my friends on Facebook posted his card or something from decades ago. How does this kind of journey have an impact on your writing in general, on your writing practice and on sort of the, the, the writing that's produced as a result? When I'm writing on the spot, I'm trying to make it as playful and interesting and accessible as possible. For 
the work you know that I send to journals or the work that goes into books, I don't always have that in mind. I want it to be strange and surprising and insightful. Um, and you know, it's it's fun to work the spectrum of poetry. And what is the latest chat book that you're promoting on this tour? I have three chat books, and um, one is uh, Recto Verso Shea, The Devil's Printer, which is a, a very experimental collaborative work that I made with my nephew, Joshua Petrie, and um, consists of palindromes, palindromic poems, and that's with collusion books. And then the other chat book, as I mentioned, is a videotape swaddled in purple wool, with 845 Press. And then there's a third uh, very tiny little thing called a home. And a home is um, a small chat book. It comes with every Alfred Gustav Press series of chat books. And that um, micro press operates on a subscription basis. So I only have a limited number of those. I, they're all love poems for my partner, Cheryl. I know that one of the secrets of your itinerary while you're visiting Windsor is that you're also planning to head to Detroit. <laughs> Do you imagine yourself engaging in any reading or writing while you're there? I don't. Am I allowed to? <laughs> <laughs> what an excellent reason to get deported. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you've planted this seed, I guess I'm not going to say that I'm on a book tour or that I'm a poet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Very good. Well, it has been a pleasure as always. Kevin Spence, thank you for joining us on All Right in Sin City. Thank you so much for having me again. Thanks for joining us. Look for more episodes of All Right in Sin City wherever you listen to podcasts. Or check out our website, allrightinsincity.com. For information and announcements of new podcasts, sign up to our email list or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.